Hello, I'm Gavin Clark with the National Museum of Computing. The museum, of course, is home to a fantastic range of working systems, the largest in the world, some 50,000 artifacts, large and small, many important to peacetime, wartime and education history. And we've been taking questions from the public over Twitter and other forms of social media um, and put them to our experts who uh, keep the museum running and fielding questions on a day to day basis. Bletchley Park was obviously well known for its code breaking during the Second World War. And we had one question via Twitter by a follower called Red Cosmonaut. The question was, ZX Spectrum was the first mass available de uh, decent computer. What would Alan Turing have made of it? Specifically, how might it have shortened the war if it had existed? Now, Colossus people know about. Uh, the ZX Spectrum, very popular personal computer released in 1982. 8-bit uh, computer, 16 kilobit memory. Um, Five million units were sold. Um, people live today will remember it. It probably got them started in computing. People also know Colossus. So what's the answer to that question? What would Alan Turing have made of it? More importantly, could it have shortened the war? Could it have been dedicated to the same function? same function considering it supposedly came along late, later supposedly was more powerful what do you think peter onion i think the problem here is that you're, you're trying to compare colossus which was a, a a one a single purpose machine it was designed specifically to do what it it did it had one task it did it very well it did it very quickly and you're trying to compare that against a general purpose computer uh, that was built many years later uh, which would not be well suited um, to doing the tasks that Colossus did. Um, for a start, it's only an 8-bit CPU in it, so you can only shunt 8 bits of uh, information about at a time. Um, I seem to remember Colossus processed about 5,000 characters a second off the tape, something like that. Yeah, Jackie's a great. Um, and you would be pushed to do anything 5,000 times a time, 5,000 times a second on a spectrum. It, um, just because of the way it worked, it didn't go that quick. So um, I suppose the, 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 the advantage may have been that it would have been smaller and you could have had a lot more of them. Uh, and in that respect, it may have been advantageous. But in terms of the actual speed of processing, I, I'm sceptical that it would have been anything faster. As to what Turing would have made of it, I, I, I really don't know. Um, bearing in mind, he never saw a machine which had a VDU on it in his lifetime. So... I should imagine he would have been um, really quite fascinated with, with graphical output of, of the systems. Peter, Peter Hope, what do you think about that? I like to think that he would probably have looked at it and said, now what can I do with this? <laughs> um, no, I just, we can only speculate really, can't we? But um, just, just by way of contrast, um, it, it, there was a challenge that was run in uh, November of 2007 um, and a message was assembled in uh, encoded on a genuine Lorentz machine, which was shipped, I think, from GCHQ out to Paderborn to the Heinz Nixdorf Museum. A message was constructed and in, enciphered on the Lorentz machine and transmitted by HF radio. That message was picked up and uh, it was read and de um, printed onto punch tape or punched onto punch tape at um, TNMOC on, uh, in, in block H. And some three and a half hours of processing time later on Colossus and the other machines uh, that we've got there on, on display, the message was successfully read. Um, by contrast, <clears throat> simultaneously with that, the message was also uh, read and um, deciphered, uh, ironically, by a German guy, Joachim Schuth, um, who used some pretty hefty equipment he had at home. He completed the whole process in something under 50 seconds. Now, 50 seconds versus three and a half hours, that sounds like a, a thrashing. But you have to realise that uh, that was 2007. Uh, Colossus was at its peak in 1945. And a single purpose regime dedicated to, what it, what it, uh, what, to one, and only, it's one and only task. Um, but you can do a very rough comparison <clears throat> and just project that performance forward. And it's not until 1985 that you can actually go out and buy a machine off the shelf that, that will give you something equivalent to Colossus performance. That would be more of a general purpose machine you could buy. But So we can, we can sort of say, I suppose, without going too far out on the limb, that uh, Colossus was 40-odd years ahead of its time in terms of its raw processing power, but just doing that one job. 
And of course, it came up at the time. There was a, a, a story that came up in the, the Times, I believe, some years ago of trying to compare the iPhone, uh, the iPhone 5, I believe, maybe to Colossus. Yeah, I believe so. I, I, I don't have to hand the, the result of that. But uh... for your question, I think people are still fascinated by modern computers. They like to pit, pitch the modern capabilities against those of Colossus from 75, 80 years ago, don't they? They do. It's a slightly un, unfair comparison because you can't really directly compare general purpose with single purpose. But it's an interesting uh, thought, pro thought uh, experiment, if nothing else.